What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today we're talking about the guaranteed highest selling game of the year, Call of Duty. Another year, another game that will dominate the sales charts. With Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 having a solid release, it is only expected that Sledgehammer, the best of the Call of Duty developers, will get this game in top shape and will be an absolute banger. Lucky for me, I paid the $70 price tag to get access to the game early and try out the campaign. With Makarov, the original crew, back with Ghost, Price, and Soap, there's absolutely no way this campaign will be bad. It'll be a certified hit. Way to go, Sledgehammer. I mean, I didn't think it was possible, but you stooped to the levels of bad as Vanguard and Ghost, and you somehow pulled it off. But where the hell did Sledgehammer go wrong? Are there any redeemable aspects of the story? Should we consider this Call of Duty campaign the worst in franchise history? Let's jump into it. I never once imagined that Call of Duty would fall into such crap as it has done in games like Ghost and Infinite Warfare, mainly because I thought we learned from the past and clearly I was absolutely wrong. If you don't know, Call of Duty creates a new game every year and due to the difficulty of making games in this next gen era, it seems like game development is now taking roughly four to five years to make full games instead of the three years which was normally the case for much of the last decade. So the classic Call of Duty method of having a release every year is starting to crack under the pressure which is forcing developers like Sledgehammer to create copy and paste versions of old games in order to meet demand. But even through all the crap, hot stories usually land pretty well, most of the time at least. But this is different. This feels like a level of malpractice that I've never imagined before. And I know what people are saying. Well, Mars, nobody really cares about campaigns anymore. I mean, sure, you can make the case that in this day and age, story FPS games are really not the fat anymore. But you can't justify me paying $70 if one third of the game is just complete trash. We have gotten to the point where COD fans are defending these practices because they just can't admit that this is just gross. But the question is, where the hell did Sledgehammer go wrong to get to this point? And it all starts with the bland story. Call of Duty games used to have such an emphasis on its storytelling, giving vibes of real life struggles that mirrored events happening in the world. But not even just that, it always covered themes that represent warfare, the fear of losing your allies and the goal of protecting the nation, trying to survive to make it home to your loved ones, and the fight of keeping one's honor at the cost of your morality. I mean, so many of older games have had such good stories with rich characters that we really get this crap now? I mean, the basic story is that after Makarov is broken out of prison, as we in Task Force 1 for 1 have to try to go and arrest him. It's a simple story, but it was just executed horribly. Every mission and moment the campaign felt like there was not really any real effects of anything that's happening. Almost like Makarov is out of prison and the rest of the world is like, eh. Or even the fact that there's legit zero consequences for Makarov's actions on the rest of the world. Yeah, he kills some people, tries to recreate the old Russian moment, but people forget the original made had done this so damn well. I hate comparing new games to the classics from the past, but when this is a reboot of a classic game, it's really hard not to do that. The classic No Russia not only was a major controversy because of how brutal the mission was, but it just was so damn intriguing. I mean, back then, killing civilians in a video game the news media was blowing up calling COD the reason for everything bad in society. But the mission itself was so pivotal for the whole series because it was planned to get the world against the Americans and Russia wanted war. So they try that here, but against Uzbekistan. And the result, basically an absolutely nothing. I mean, there's no grand war or leading to a possible World War III. It basically results in everyone knowing instantly that Makarov is behind everything and the world just kind of looks the other way. Almost like even if Makarov is the main villain, it's almost like his actions have zero effect on the actual story. Because it's just about finding him rather than stopping the effects of his act. In the original, Makarov's web of connections basically made it where there is really a world of villains that were causing major issues. Makarov was behind it all, which made him the ultimate villain. But in this game, it just feels like Makarov is just a fly that is pissing everyone off, including the Russians, and they just want you to be the fly swat. The story may have some cinematic moments but damn the storytelling is for the most part is just bare bones and just one of the most laziest campaigns i've ever seen what really grinds my gears is the way missions are organized maybe i'm double dipping a little with the whole story being just crap but the mission design is just bad generally you always want to set up missions with the idea that you are always trying to have an ultimate goal that you want to end up doing almost feeling like every step you take has a purpose 
and there's always something happening. Like going to previous games, not only were you hunting down Makarov, we were trying to slow down the effects of his action. Whether it was going to the White House to secure the president, hijack a Russian sub to use it against the invasion force, or go after his arms dealers and inner circle to get to Makarov. The idea was that each mission had a goal and whether it failed or it was successful, it actually feels like you did have something that you were doing and it actually had meaning. But in the old games, there were missions where they would send certain task force members to separate and they would each kind of do their own mission on the side. So it was almost like this was a multi-tiered front, making it feel like it was a unit. In this game, we were legit set on solo missions constantly. There's no real sense of squad mentality whatsoever. I mean, I don't mind playing as different members of the task force, but for Christ's sake, can we have more squad missions? I mean, in the old games, they basically set up the idea that if you are alone, it's a pretty big deal because you don't have someone watching your back and you're basically behind enemy lines, which creates a lot of tension. But for this game, you're constantly alone. So it's honestly just the norm. At times, it just feels like it's almost second nature at this point. Seeing a squad member honestly just had me in shock. That was honestly the best part about Kai. You set up all these badass characters because you're working with them in all these different missions. Then in the blink of an eye, one of them could be killed and it's just straight up heartbreaking. One of the biggest things that gets me the most annoyed is the way that these campaign missions are organized and that the fact that 90% of them are basically repurposed DMZ missions. I never seen this level of laziness when it comes to level design in my life. I mean, the more I think about it, the more gross I feel. I, I honestly feel like I would take a shower. If you've never played Warzone before, the basic idea is that you get to jump out of a plane, find guns, and eliminate enemies. So what does Sledgehammer do? Let's take DMZ and put some voice lines in there and just call it a day. I jumped out of a plane so many times in the COD campaign that it legit makes me feel like I'm an expert at skydiving at this point. I mean, just think about the vast array of ways to have us enter into a mission or at least set up the premise for us to be in this area. Why do we need to be so bland that the missions have us all kind of jump into the same way, almost like this is a spec ops mission where we jump into the zone and go find materials and get armor pieces. Aren't we part of the most elite task force in the world? Why does it feel like we can barely scrap together two guns for a mission where instead I need to find everything. Next you're gonna tell me that I don't even have a flashlight in case it gets dark. Uh, oh yeah, we don't. What's surprising to me is the amount of glitches in this game that make it feel completely rushed. I know we can't talk about modern gaming without mentioning the word glitched or the phrase not polished, but I thought with how broken Call of Duty Cold War was when it was first released, that maybe, just maybe, Activision would learn what no, we get not only the same glitches, but even worse ones compared to the last installments. And these range from being rendering issues to FPS ticks to straight up mission breaking glitches that make you want to headbutt a wall. I had several in my playthrough that just made me die laughing as well as just cry to myself because when you see these type of BS glitches occur and in modern gaming, it just shows you that this happens all the time. Whether it was something like guards breaking into the Shadow Realm or having my own silent movie. Roswell! Really? <laughs> we travel fast. Only if he wants it to do. You think he's working for the Kremlin? Oh, that's real nice. There is a moment in the game where I legit had to save my ally from getting killed because he's taken hostage, and all of a sudden, soldiers are sprinting up the hill and immediately do a transformation technique and arrive and kill my partner before I can even do anything. And I straight up lost the mission. Like, I get it. If this was some indie studio that had maybe 100 people working on a brand new title, but we're talking about Activision. We're, we're talking about Call of Duty. And this is just a copy and paste job. There is no reason we should have a single glitch here. This is just bad. I mean, I could talk all day long about how bad this campaign is, but the question is, are there any redeeming aspects of the story at all? Honestly, the look of the game is pretty damn good. Being a fan of Call of Duty for as many years as I have, this is probably the best looking COD game of them all. The various environments, weather patterns, character designs, excluding soap of course, all look great. Even if some of the writing for the characters is a little ridiculous, but well, they all look spot on. The mission preps, which were always infamous in Call of Duty games, were well organized and actually gave off a vibe of a detailed recon report. Underwater scenes, firefights all look realistic, which gets A grades from me. It almost is like Activision made the game look exactly what we wanted 
but forgot about the story, the character writing, and just the basic soul. More freedom missions are a solid idea, but just done poorly. The idea of a weapons-free mission has some solid grounding in the concept, but it just feels like it was executed so poorly that it was just trash. Giving the player more ways to complete a mission rather than just doing a point A and point B is a great idea. I mean, especially with how much people love open world games, it only makes sense that FPS games will do more of that. Just look at Halo Infinite. But the issue I have is that for the love of everything, don't make the entire concept a copy and paste of DMZ. Why don't you just use missions like the Lawrence of Arabia mission from Battlefield 1? As you play, they give you specific objectives to complete at any way you want to. So it basically gives your choices have some weight to them. It gives them effects. You can go after a compound and destroy some tanks. And the effect of that would be that the enemy would not really have as many resources to use against you later parts of that mission. There are also some optional objectives to complete so that it, it kind of does the same thing. My expectation of hearing about weapon-free missions would be something like Metal Gear Solid 5. You get certain objectives to complete and you can have it your way in, in how you go about doing so. It's not something Call of Duty hasn't done before. Call of Duty Cold War, the mission Desperate Measures, you basically play as a spy in a Soviet base and you're trying to find intel and goods needed for the mission so you can tackle it any way you want to. That's what I wanted to see in this weapons free missions, not some bland version of DMZ. Of all the story components, I felt like Macroff is the best aspect of it overall. I feel like for the first time in years, I felt like a COD story actually had a viable villain that wasn't just crap. Macroff was always an infamous and classic villain from the original COD games, so just ushering his name to this gaming community already gets its fans excited. And I gotta be honest here, I was very skeptical that he would be solid in this new installment. He was involved in a lot of the plot and he directly caused issues the squad had to deal with. There's some really screwed up moments that were solely his fault. I mean, you're hitting on everything you wanna see from a villain. Now, I'm not going to bloviate and say he was amazing because there were some major issues. Like honestly, every sentence Macroft makes, he is smirking or smiling. It does help that he has a very punchable face, but he is sort of representing the conservative soviet style terrorist you would think he has more of a stronger demeanor they're going with the more psycho look which is cool but i feel like the older games did him justice his writing and the way he acted in the originals gave off the idea that he feels justified for his actions. They did a solid job with Makarov, but I would like to see more of his character development in the future, kind of drifting closer to the original games. When I see Call of Duty release a new game, I'm always gonna be skeptical, because you will either get a solid experience with some things that are great, but with some flaws, or a complete trash heap that is embarrassing. What gets me nervous about this game upon its official full release is that when looking at the campaign, it is a buggy, rushed, not fun mess. And if I felt that they were trying to keep to the themes of the originals then maybe i can look the other way on some aspects but we're talking about a 70 dollar game made from a major publisher and this is what we get of one of the three major modes if you need some context at the level of laziness that we're talking about both the previous installments of cod Modern warfare and Modern warfare 2 had at least 14 missions of the campaign. Modern Warfare 2, the most recent game, had one more than, than both of them, averaging around two to three more hours of content than the Call of Duty that we're getting just this past week. On record, this campaign is the shortest time to beat in the entire franchise. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? And they charge you full price. I, I honestly think I might throw up. I really don't care if people don't think highly of FPS story games anymore but this is just false advertising. This is a scam. I'd have more respect if they sold the campaign separately and gave me a discounted price for the multiplayer because at least you don't have to rob the rest of us of something as bad as this. In my opinion, this is matching the level of story games like Vanguard and actually makes Ghost look like a decent story. Excuse me, sir. I hope my horrible ugliness won't be a distraction to you. Not at all, boy. And that's and that's saying something. And the worst part about this whole experience is that it feels like the campaign has proven that Call of Duty has lost its soul. There has not been much redemption left from this story at this point. And with the ending being as bad as it was, I honestly don't want to know what happens. They might as well just remaster old campaigns at this point. I'm not going to give this game a grade, but if I was going to give my final verdict, it reaches the dumpster fire stank level of bad campaign. Next time Activision tries to sell us a $70 crap like this, do yourself a favor. Just skip it. But what do you think about Call of Duty's campaign? Do you think it's as crappy as everyone says? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want to support me in exposing scams such as Call of Duty, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.